Good morning. My name is Jesse Morales. I'm one of the elders here at Riverside Church. And what a joy it is for us to be together this morning. I want to encourage you to prepare your hearts now as we prepare to enter into a time of worship as Adam Pizarro leads us. Would you worship with us this morning? Colossians 1 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. It is Christ whom we worship. He is before and in all things. Let's worship Him this morning. Give Him all that we have. Let's sing this. Salvation tearing through the dead of night. See the kingdom burst into colors at the speed of light. Freedom shaking up the atmosphere as the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears. Come on, let's sing beyond the skies. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us. The everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on a Savior. See the image of love. See His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Creation waking up to kingdom come. See the hope. See the hope of heaven shining like the rising sun. This is our hope. Now forever, lifted up from death to life. There's no fear in love and no darkness in His endless light. We see beyond the skies, beyond the skies above. Love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, see His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun, oh, oh, we look to the sun. Beyond the skies, beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one. Jesus our God, oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, see its praises, yeah, oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love. See His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Oh, we look to You, Lord. Oh, we look to the sun. Oh, 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 oh we look to the sun. Amen. the King of Kings. 
kings and the Lord of lords. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope and without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets, to Thank you, Adam, for leading us in that time of worship. It's good to praise the Lord. Uh, I want to welcome you if you are a guest and this is your first time joining us. We would like to encourage you to fill out a Connect card, which gives us an opportunity to learn a little bit about you, maybe how you've come to learn about us. And if you have any particular needs or prayer requests, this is a great opportunity for you to let us know a little bit about yourself. And it gives us an opportunity to connect with you and see how we might meet those needs, be it prayer, a tangible need, what have you. We are interested in you and we would love to connect with you. So please take the time to fill out that card. Now, I want to share with you a great opportunity we had last Tuesday where we had yet another food drive. And we partnered with the city of North Lauderdale 
And as a result of that partnership and your generous giving, we were able to feed hundreds of families and supply them with basic needs during this season. And what a good use of time, what a great ministry opportunity that was. Can I say to you, Riverside, thank you for your generosity. And uh, on that note, we're going to now offer you a chance to continue to give unto the Lord. Generously give from your heart as the Lord places that on your heart. It's right to give. It's an act of worship. God honors it. And I want to encourage you to worship the Lord in giving. God is honored and he will meet all of our needs in Christ because he is faithful. Please take time to do that now. And uh, let me let me also uh, take this time to encourage you to prepare your hearts now as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer. Um, we are so mindful that during this season, the needs are so varied, uh, in some cases severe, uh, in other cases uh, just unsure. And we know this, while the season may be marked by ambiguity and, and uncertainty, we know that our God is faithful and that He's unmoved in this season. He can be relied upon, He can be trusted, because He's faithful. And so with that in mind, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we, we acknowledge that. We, we tell you, according to your word, that you are faithful. We look at the history of our lives. We see your faithfulness. You, you never fail. You're never late. And you supply all of our needs perfectly. Father, I lift up every member of this body, every need represented, whether it's emotional, physical, financial, Lord, you know the need and you know the provision, you know the perfect timing of that provision and you know the perfect way to provide it. So Lord, uh, just cry out before you on behalf of every member of this body and every person listening to this service, Lord, that you would meet that need in, in, in a supernatural way uh, so that it is undeniably said that this is the hand of God moving on my behalf. May your people be blessed. May they be encouraged as we prepare now to hear the preached word of God. Lord, we worship you, we bless you, and we thank you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you're ready. I'm so excited as always. You know, I've been coming to Riverside for 22 years now, and I've been under this man's preaching the entire time. Would you help me in welcoming Pastor Brian as he brings the Word of God today. Today we begin a new series, Book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 1. I'm really excited about this series. The title is Supreme, Supreme, and it is not just a message that is relevant right now for today, for this moment, but it is timeless. And I, I want to just read the first two verses just to get our feet wet, just to get in the door. And then our text for today will be all the way through verse 8, through verse 8. So verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. The apostle Paul, he's, he's toward the end of his life when he writes this letter. Uh, he's in prison, and we think he's probably in prison in Rome. And, and so here's the scene. Let me just set the stage for you. He's there in prison. He's on trial for preaching Jesus, for building churches. And this brother has been through it. People trying to kill him. He's been arrested. He's been shipped all the way to Rome. And he may die. He may die in Rome. And he's, he's facing that in, in the twilight years of his life. And a brother comes to visit. A brother is with him there named Epaphras. And Epaphras, just imagine this conversation. Epa Epaphras is there talking to Paul. He says, Paul, brother, you remember when you were in Ephesus preaching? You were there for years. You were there for like three years and, and, and things got crazy. And then you went into the hall of Tyrannus and, and, and you preached there for a long time. And it was so fruitful. It was so alive. And, and you taught me and you, you, you taught me how to follow Jesus. And, and I experienced new life and it was amazing. Well, as you know, Paul, I 
took those foundations. I took the truth of who Jesus is back to my hometown. I, I went back to Colossae and I started preaching Jesus. I started doing exactly what you did, telling me what to do, showing me how. I took it all back. And as you know, Paul, there was an amazing response and a church started. And, and Paul, I, I need to tell you that, that Colossae is changing, that this place is changing. The town is not what it used to be. It's kind of declining. Um, you know, Ephesus is the big deal now. And, and as all of that is happening, the, the influences from the culture in that town is it's all seeping into the church now still the church still followers of Jesus there's so much good that's there but Paul it's 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 hard for me to explain to you but it's not like they're replacing Christ it's not like a, a, a Christ substitute but it's a supplement there 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 are some who are talking like they want to add something to Jesus and it's a, it's a little religious, it's a little spiritual, it's a little, it's, it's about the material, it's, it's about all these. So, so just imagine this scene that, that Epaphras is, is telling this, all of this to Paul. Paul's in prison. And Paul's like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not adding to Jesus. You can't add to Jesus. Jesus is everything. Jesus, Jesus is supreme. And that that is the main idea throughout the book of Colossians, that Jesus, Jesus is everything. And, and so he sits down, he says, Timothy, come over here, and he and Timothy get to work. And he starts writing this glorious letter that exalts Jesus Christ. And it, it's so interesting to me because at a, at a time like this, friends, listen, we, we are adapting, we're innovating, we're... We're learning all kinds of new, new skills. I'm, I'm certainly being put in a position where I'm doing things differently than I was doing them two or three months ago. I'm sure to some degree, all of us are experiencing that. And at the same time, while we're innovating, while we're adapting, some, some of us are experiencing some, some major challenges. And, and I wanna invite you to lean in to the book of Colossians, to lean into this message because what we need more than ever as we, as we take stock, as we recalibrate, as we examine our lives, what we need more than ever is Jesus. Let, let, me, let me maybe just say it like this if I could. I'm, I'm all for adapting to the moment. We have to. We, we, we can't just do business as usual. And, and that, that finds its way into relationships where we live, in my family, in ministry, in church, in, in business, we have to adapt. We have to innovate. We have to, we have to adjust to the season. But I want to tell you that what I think we need the most is not just adaptive leadership skills, all for it. I think I'm making that clear, but we need Jesus. We need more of Jesus. I, I think in a moment, when everything is being shaken, it would be tragic, tragic and foolish to come to this moment and not recalibrate in your relationship with God Almighty. And that's done in and through Jesus. That is done when we understand that this central truth stands before us, that everything God has for us is found in Jesus Christ. So here you are. You're the Apostle Paul just for a moment, you're writing this letter and you're going to send it back with uh, a guy named Tychicus and he's going to deliver and read that message to the whole church. Read this short little letter and you want to center them on Jesus Christ. How do you begin? How do you start? How, how, how do I, how do I take the summary message of the meaning of life, the meaning of uni the universe, how I know God, how I live, how everything holds together, how everything fits. Um, it, Brian, you're saying to me right now, like, no matter what, get Jesus. Like, get new information, get new skills, but none of that means anything if I'm not getting Jesus along the way. How do you, how do you take this massive message 
And, and where do you even start? Well, the answer is surprising and it's very helpful when I'm just going to ask the question, how do I begin? How do I begin the Christian life? How do I begin? How do I begin helping others see who Christ is? Where does it start? And of course, it, it starts with the gospel, the message of who Jesus is. But in order to introduce that, Paul does something fascinating. He begins by giving thanks. And, and this is what I want to say is, is here's the big idea. Gospel thanks is the easiest way to get started in gospel living. Let me say that again. Gospel thanks is the easiest way to get started in gospel living. Okay, I got to unpack that because what in the world am I talking about? What, what do we mean by the gospel? Let me read verses 3 through 8. Paul is giving thanks here. He's giving thanks for people he's never met. He's giving thanks for people he doesn't really know for the most part. And he, it's a whole paragraph, and he just pours it out. Let's, let's hear what he has to say. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of, of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. Okay, so it's a Thanksgiving paragraph. Paul is thanking God for them, but he's specifically thanking God for them in terms of how the gospel has brought transformation and change in their lives. Okay, all right. So just notice these phrases. He says, uh, the word of truth, the gospel, the grace of God in truth. Again, the word of truth, the gospel, the grace of God in truth. He's saying, this is the message that Epaphras brought to you. And it brought complete renewal and transformation into your lives. And I am so grateful. Okay. All right. Big idea. The easiest way for you to begin living a life that's centered on Jesus, to practically live it out and to help others is by giving thanks. Okay. Parents, let me just say this. Um, it's, it's, it's always a danger that as parents, we're, we're seeing the areas where our kids need to change, the deficiencies, the, the, the we, we imagine, we look down the road and, and we imagine how things could go wrong if they don't sort out these little character issues or these habits or these practices and all of these things. And, and we say things like, if you don't stop biting your nails, you're never going to get a job and you're going to have no friends. And we say crazy things because, because we're just, we're just wanting to help them. But we underestimate the power of affirmation, encouragement, affection, thanksgiving, right? We, we need to start by doing some asset mapping. We need to just give thanks. And there are two ways biblically that we, we do that, okay? Uh, listen, I, the, the outcome we're after in this message is not, uh, okay, Thank you, God, for the sun. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for breath in my lungs. Thank you for food to eat. I mean, that's great. That's wonderful. I, let's give thanks for everything. But one of the reasons a life filled with thanksgiving is so unappealing is because we're so superficial about it. We're trying, we think in that moment that we're actually trying to, to not take things for granted. And it's a great practice. But Paul's giving thanks here is substantive. And there are two springs. There are two sources of biblical thanksgiving. One is creation. It is that you are made in the image of God. Uh, you may have faults. There may be a covering, a veil of sin because we're fallen but 
When I look at you, I see the image of God, and I want to affirm that. I want to thank God for it. I want to begin by expressing your value, your worth, your dignity as one made in the image of God. Okay, this is this is this first spring of Thanksgiving is is one that gives gives us opportunity to thank God for every person uh, on the planet. Now, the second one is salvation, is grace. It's what this paragraph is. In fact, when it begins, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the address. He goes, okay, listen, we're there, we're praying, and we give thanks to God, the Father of Jesus. Now, that's weird language, but you see it on occasion. You see it in Romans 15. You see it in a few places throughout Scripture. And whenever Paul addresses God in a prayer or a thanksgiving, he's telling you his theme. And in this particular case, it's a theme of salvation, the theme of Jesus, the theme of grace and what God has done for us. Uh, so he, he's about to unload on them this robust thanksgiving for, for the gospel and how it's worked in their lives. Okay. What do I mean by the gospel? And why do we keep using this word? It's really important that we understand this. I could just say Jesus because sometimes that's how the scripture does it. Sometimes the scripture just talks about uh, who Jesus is and what he's done for us. So the Father blesses you in Jesus. And when you trust in Jesus, you receive all the blessing that God has for you. When we talk about the gospel, we're actually talking about the message, the truth, and that's what it's called here. The message of truth, the message of grace, the word of truth, the gospel, literally means the good news. Now, why is that important? Why do, sometimes we say Jesus and sometimes we say the gospel. One time, we're, we, we always want to emphasize the person of Jesus and who he is and what he's done, but sometimes we emphasize the message. And here's why. It's super, super important. It's because... The message emphasizes that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is your substitute. He takes your place. He, he carries your guilt. He carries your sin. And, and because he's in your place, your guilt, your sin is placed on him. And he takes it to the cross and pays for it. And his righteousness, his standing, his favor with the Father is placed on you. And so we're emphasizing with this message the good news that Jesus is your substitute, that you're in Christ, that your past is no longer your past, but his past, that your present is no longer your present, but his present, that your future is no longer your future, but his future. And Paul just like just brings in this massive truth and begins thanking God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the Colossians. I don't even know them, but I'm... And, and he begins by affirming what God has done, not just in making, creating these beautiful people, but saving them. The gospel is at work, Colossae, in your midst. And I'm so thankful. All right. So uh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm laboring, friend, because I want you to see this because it will change your life that we want to be gospel-centered. We want to live with this truth that Jesus is my substitute. In, and we want it to shape everything that we are and everything that we do. And a, a, a really practical way for you to do that, to start is with giving thanks. To start, to restart, to stay aligned, to not get off track. And this is why, if we wanted to take the time right now, and I won't, we could go to verse after verse after verse that tells you, always give thanks. Give, give thanks in every circumstance. Uh, just over and over, this is laid out before us as a practice, as a value. And one of the reasons, is not the only reason, is it's the easiest way to get started, and it keeps us aligned. And it is often, often neglected. Uh, in the Christian life. It's, it's a powerhouse uh, in terms of daily practice, okay? So I'm going to break down the passage uh, into three parts. 
We give thanks for gospel conversion, gospel growth, and gospel optimism. Gospel conversion, gospel growth, gospel optimism. Gospel conversion, verses 3 through 5. Verses 3 through 5. Let's look at it. So what does he say? We thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this You have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel. So Epaphras came to you. He preached this message. And the message is simply, hey, there's hope. There's hope. You can be forgiven of your sin. You can have new life. The spirit of God will live in you. Jesus has died to pay for everything you've done, every thought, every word, every action that was displeasing to God. You were under the judgment of God. The the righteous, holy judgment of God hung over you. And rather than pour that out on you, it was poured out on Jesus in your place. Trust in Jesus. There's a message of hope. Jesus was crucified for your sin and guilt and raised from the dead so that you would experience a complete redemption and restoration, a new body, a resurrection body, eternity in a material, new heaven, new earth, living forever, working forever in meaning and purpose without the corruption of this world. This is the good news. This is a message of hope that, that we're, we're, we're on a journey that does not, does not end in the destruction of all things, but the renewal of all things, ultimately. And this, this, as the Spirit of God takes this message and breathes it into the hearts of the hearers, and, 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 and by, by just the sovereign will of God, God opens your heart to see Jesus is God. Jesus is man, and he's my substitute. And I trust in him, in him alone, I see this, I I hear this message of hope, and I believe. You see the triad here, faith, hope, and love. I hear the message of hope. I embrace it in faith, a spirit-given, gospel-provoked, gospel-born faith. And the result is is love, is I, I begin now a journey of loving God and loving others. And, and I, I would say it to us like this, friends. I sometimes, just by God's sheer mercy and grace, I'm, I'm there in the morning, I'm praying, I'm seeking the Lord, and God meets me. It's not, it's not the same every day, and, and, and I don't want to give you any false impressions, but there are times, no, no doubt, there are times where, man, I just, I just feel the love of God. I, I, it, it rises up in me, and I'm reading Scripture, and I'm praying, and I'm... Yeah, I, I'm, tr- I'm wanting to qualify this and tell you that I do this so imperfectly. But the warmth of God and his presence sometimes meets me. And I immediately, as I come out of that place, I want to tell people I love them. I want to go hug my wife. I want to call all my kids. I want to call all the elders. I want to tell all the people in my life, I love you. It's, it's just God in you in that moment. It's the response of hope. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's such good news, right? Now, he particularly applies love to the people of God, right? This is a thanksgiving for the power of gospel, the gospel bringing renewal to people. This is... This is right now, Riverside, I just want to unleash unleash, excuse me, unleash uh, uh, just a tidal wave of thanksgiving into your life, right? I want conversion for you. I want you to hear the message of hope if you, if you haven't followed Jesus and put your faith in Jesus Christ and watch how he makes you into a new creation. Okay, gospel conversion. Number two, gospel growth. So gospel conversion was verses three through five. Gospel growth is verses six through eight. Look, he describes here this organic quality to the gospel. The gospel is alive. The message of Jesus as your substitute is alive. 
which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing. You see, you latch on to this cardinal truth, this mother of all truth in life, that Jesus has taken my place and it grows in you. It produces fruit in you. There is, um, there is a power at work um, creating a new, shaping, molding, bringing fruit in your life. And so he says, this, this, is, this is happening in the whole world as it is also in you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Okay, from the moment you hear it and you begin to respond in faith and it's bringing new life, there is a renewal, a growth. And, and, and it works a little bit like this. The more, the more I go out, in, in the Lord, the more I grow, I become aware of, of my fallenness, of my sin, of, of how, how holy God is and how unholy really I am. And, and, and the more I realize those two truths and they kind of grow apart, it's not that God becomes more holy. He doesn't. He's, <laughs> but I become more aware of just how awesome God is. But the more aware I become of God and His greatness, the more aware I become of just how deep the roots are of my need and my fallenness. And if, I, if, I, if you'll allow me to say my sin, my pride, my selfishness. But the bigger that gap seems to get, Jesus continues to fill it. The gospel is growing and growing and growing and getting larger and more powerful. That, that I realize that when I say that Jesus was my substitute, that he now connects me to God in a way that only could only happen in that way. So there's this, there's this, uh, okay, let me, let me make one more uh, attempt at an application here before we move on to, to gospel optimism. Um, as I grow in Christ, there are obstacles. There are stubborn, stubborn sins. Uh, there, there's my, what the Bible calls my flesh, my tendency towards pride and anger. Those would be specialties of, of, of my own fleshly existence, right? And they're stubborn. They're entrenched. They're entangled. They got their fingers in everything in my life. But, but, but the gospel, the knowledge that I'm free of that by the grace of God because Jesus took my place is just increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and knocking down these obstacles that are in my life, in my soul. But there aren't just obstacles in my soul. There are obstacles in the world. There are, there are, um, there are things that are just wrong, just corruption and immorality. And there's like, it's like the, the stream of the world is going toward death and destruction and I'm floating along in it. But the gospel is carrying me as it grows upstream against the flow because I'm growing. I'm not hopeless in a broken world because the gospel is growing in me. It's knocking out obstacles. It's bringing restoration. It's bringing redemption. It's, it's shining the light of God through my life into a dark world and bringing renewal. So I start gospel conversion, but I... I don't leave this message that Jesus is my substitute. I take it with me. It grows. It gets larger. It produces fruit, produces fruit in me. It, it produces fruit in the world around me, and it knocks out spiritual forces of evil all at the same time. All right. Last, gospel optimism. Verse 6, uh, Paul makes a crazy statement. Like, is this a preacher exaggeration, or is this the truth? He says that indeed in the whole world, the gospel's bearing fruit. Uh, it's growing, all right? And uh, we wanna say, hey, Paul, I mean, not to, not to be negative here, but you're in jail, you're in prison. I mean, who are you kidding? Uh, and yeah, you started a few churches, but the whole world? And you know, I think Paul is saying, listen, this is not exaggeration. I'm full of hope. I'm full of optimism because the, the God of the universe has given his son to take his world back. And you know what? I'm in prison, 
but I'm writing a letter and 2,000 years from now, people will be reading this letter and it will be bearing fruit. It will be growing. God cannot be stopped. There's an optimism that fills our hearts. It says, listen, I could get down. I could, I could get down about this discouragement, about this defeat, about this personal failure, about opposition. But Paul, Paul's in prison and he's saying, you know what? <laughs> I'm writing to a church that I didn't even have to start myself. I preached and this guy, Epaphras, gets saved and he goes home and he preaches and a whole church gets going and now we're helping them see that Jesus Christ is supreme. All right. Think, friends, think of this glorious truth. I want you to give thanks. I want you to give gospel thanks. If you belong to Jesus, I want you to stop right now and just give thanks to God. Think about, listen, what, are you, what are you afraid of? What do you fear? What are you anxious of? What's robbing you of peace and joy today? Is it, I, listen, I may get sick. I may die. Hey, Jesus is risen. You've got a new body. God is with you. I feel guilty. I, I've done this. I've struggled with this. I've struggled with these same sins. No, 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 listen. Jesus has paid for your sin. You are forgiven in Jesus. Put your, hear the message of hope that Jesus is your substitute and that Jesus has been raised and that you have new life. You have meaning and purpose right now and life for all of eternity because Jesus has taken your place. And allow that truth to get larger as you believe, as you respond to the message of hope larger and larger and larger and larger forgiveness resurrection new life all in jesus we begin with gospel thanks when we're when we get off track just come back to this lord i want to enter into your presence through thanksgiving i want to thank you i want to thank you that jesus is my substitute i want to thank you for 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 the hope i'm putting my message my 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 faith in that message lord thank you thank you for the hope that is mine in jesus Friends, we begin, we begin this glorious journey into this cardinal truth, Jesus is supreme, with thanksgiving. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Folks, I want to encourage you, um, as you've heard that word, if God is warming your heart, call out on the Lord, call out on the name of the Lord. The word of God promises that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved and that to the uttermost in every respect. God is faithful. Well, now as we close the meeting, I want to encourage you in a few things. If, if you desire to connect with us in a more meaningful way, I want to encourage you to go to our website, 954church.com, and there you can see a variety of Zoom home groups, if you will, where you can sign up and register to join and participate with us as we uh, engage in community digitally. Can I tell you, it's an edifying time. Uh, my wife and I lead a group, several other groups taking place throughout the week. Plug in, get connected, stay connected, and let's help each other as we grow in our walk together with the Lord. And then of course, Adam, thank you once again for leading us in worship. Would you now close us out with the benediction? Church, in response to the reading of God's word, let's give thanks to him this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Church, we receive this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God bless you, Riverside Church. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.